Hey everybody, I'm Lisa Young Sutton, and today's video is on combining two Lenormand decks, as well as explaining how I use the extended box as a teaching tool. Now, I never really lay this spread for readings, but, but use it to move students comfortably from a box spread to a grand tableau, so it's a teaching tool. For those of you who are teaching Lenormand, or for you learners who want to inch your way toward a grand tableau, give this a try. So first, let me explain how I set up the extended box. I start by laying the inner box, just as you normally would, but I do pre-select the center card because the purpose of this entire spread is to mimic the way you read around a life area card in a grand tableau, okay? So, um, you're going to pre-select a life area card and place it in the center. There is the stork. I stuck it right there. All right. So um, now when I first am working with students, I lay the box upright, but I lay this outer frame upside down. So we start it. <clears throat> We start it, you know, with all these cards um, upside down because it's just too many cards for them to look at. And, and I want them to focus on interpreting this uh, inner box first. And you can see I also leave, you know, like a little uh, bit of space between the inner box and the outer frame. And, and that just helps people to not just see a big clump of cards. It's, it's visually less distracting. All right, so you start uh, by interpreting the inner box, um, and then you move to the, the outer frame, okay? So when we look at this outer layer, we can see what cards are influencing from above, right? We can see the left-hand cards uh, show what's pushing the story forward, um, and the cards to the right are showing where the energy is heading, right? And these bottom cards are showing what's, what's at the, the foundation of the story. Now you can see what happens when you add this extra um, frame of cards because like in this case, the seeker lands in the inner box and he's over here. So he didn't have a box of cards to read around, but now he does, right? Now that we added this, uh, extra frame of cards, right? So now he has a full box around him and all the outer cards do. And you, you have more knighting possibilities and more cards to mirror and all that. All right, so as for combining two decks, well, why would I wanna do such a thing? Simply to see what doubles appear because these doubles will draw your attention and act like an exclamation mark or a red flag highlighting a particular topic or theme. You know, similar for those of you who use houses, right? It's similar to a card in its own house, right? It kind of draws attention to itself. Well, double cards will do the same thing. So now this, um, looking at this example, uh, this was a reading for a man who wanted to know if it was a good time to move house. And the partner card was not pre-selected. It did show up and that, that was his wife. Um, this was a reading I did, I think it was two summers ago. Anyway, we're just gonna act like it's happening right now for this video. So his question was, how will my plans to move residents this summer work out? And I start by seeing what identicals appear. And we can see that we have two riders. In fact, we had two riders in the inner spread. Even before I turned over these outer cards, you could see we had two riders. Um, and we also have two um, crosses <laughs> and we have two hearts and we have two storks. Now, even though I pre-selected this stork and, and uh, you know, forced it there, the other one appeared as well. So the fact that we have two riders, what does that tell me? It tells me he's currently giving this idea a lot of thought. He's putting a lot of energy into it and he's acting quickly, um, possibly out of a sense of urgency because the scythe is in the hidden issue space, right? Um, so he, I think he's actively trying to find a way to move right now. Now, the extra stork showing up tells me that um, it, there's going to be a change, that things are going to evolve, like his plan is going to evolve from his original idea, 
right? Things are gonna change and evolve regarding this move. Because we have two storks. Um, the two hearts. The two hearts uh, just say that there's a lot of passion and, and emotion involved in this project. Um, this tells me that he feels he needs to move or has a strong desire to change residence right now. It's not like just, you know, somebody who needs to move for work or just thinks it's economically a good idea right now. This is some, this is a, a move that's fueled by emotion, all right? And looking at where the, the hearts are, <laughs> they, have, they have the mountain between them, right? So I'd say that his desire is to rise above this challenge, but his passion is being crushed, right? Because think about it, you have two hearts to read now. One is above the, the mountain and one is below it. Now the two crosses, I mean, you know, we have 72 cards, right? Yeah, 36 and 36. We got 72 cards at our disposal and this is a 25 card spread and out of those, uh, 72 cards we got both crosses yeah so um that shows that there's a lot of strain and struggle that he can't easily walk away from right like he's lugging that cross and he feels he's responsible maybe for making this move happen and and trying to figure it out and it's quite an ordeal right and, and both riders face a cross <laughs> right so yeah, he's discovering that this is going to be difficult, and but he's going to continue to struggle with it. So, um, you know, the riders face what they are bringing to the seeker. So what are they bringing to him? Hardship and more hardship. Struggle and more struggle. Despair and more despair, right? There you go. So now when we look at this, inner box, right? We can see that he lands on one side of the stork and the snake is on the other side. So that tells me he's become entangled in a difficult situation regarding moving. And the side in the hidden issue space often appears as the final straw. It, it, it made me think that he's, he's going to reach a point of taking radical action and, and he, he's going to sort through the reasons he feels to need to move at this time. Um, now the center of the foundational row of the inner box is the money card, is fish. And we can see that money is at the central or is a central underlying factor regarding this whole story. Yeah. Um, and the fact that the fish knights to both riders and what are both riders bringing yeah the crosses yeah so you know if he acts on this impulse if he acts on this impulse to spend money he's in for hardship and despair that that's what the rider is going to bring him yeah so the final card of the inner box is the tray and when the tray is in that final position it's telling you that something is still too unhealthy and needs time to, to grow into a healthier state, right? So it's telling you that something needs to mature and that requires time. That's why it's a patience card. And he's above it. So we could say that he's firmly rooted, rooted, rooted in this idea. And um, yeah, and he's not gonna give up on it easily. That's what the crosses say as well. Um, but he needs to let things unfold naturally and be patient, right? That's the message of that, of that tray. Now let's see why his wife showed up. Why is wifey poo appearing? Well, she's holding up a scythe um, and touches the mountain, which is crushing a heart, um, has the other heart above, and, and she's touching the fish, which is held up by the coffin. So. Just looking at this little box around her, there's part of a box, right? Um, it looks like she's fueled by emotion. She's fueled by emotion. She's feeling pressure to ease her heartache. 
Uh, we could say that she has a lot of deep seated, a lot of deep seated, deep, 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 deep. We've got two deep cards here, deep seated feelings of urgency. That's the scythe and feels there's resistance to what she desires. The, you know, the mountain crush in the heart. Um, you know, the fish above the coffin too, looks like she wants the freedom to add value to her life, but she's feeling buried like she's in a dark place, you know, and based on these cards and her column, look at her column. It starts with the, the, um, she mirrors the, the clouds, right? That head her column and she's got the snake in the side there too. So, um, based on her cards, her column and the cards that connect her to him, the primary connecting card, right? He, he, uh, his line of sight is the row, right? Hers is the column. So this is their uh, primary connecting card is the snake, but they also have um, the mice. So it looks like she's nagging and trying to seduce him into what she wants, right? I, I'd say that she's the reason why he feels pressure to move at a time when it's clearly not favorable. So yeah, I'm gonna blame it all on her. Um, now, what did this outer layer of cards add to the story? Well. We can uh, now see what the snake is pointing to, which we didn't have in the inner box, right? It was just pointing out here in, in nowhere land. Um, and, you know, I'd say that uh, this, this snake is telling him that he's, um, his emotions are betraying him, right? The snake pointing at the heart. I knew I'd spit it out. I'd say his emotions are betraying him. They're complicating matters. And he's got to view things more logically. And that's, that's why those two hearts showed up, right? This, this is not a time to be emotional. Yeah. Um, and on the other side of him, we didn't have this card before, but we can see now that he is going to find a solution because that's what he's heading toward. He's heading toward the key. All right, so I'll, I'll get back to that. Now the top row... The top row adds troubling unknowns. We got the book and the um, uh, clouds, right? So we have we have troubling unknowns that will upset him. That's the birds that will upset him into changing the way he views this project. We have the stork and the in the moon. Um, the bottom row. What is the bottom row adding? Well, the the bottom row says that this project is starting from a foundation of her desires as well as gnawing worries of, of painful endings and feeling that this is a crisis, right? There's feelings of scarcity and a need to change directions. That's the ways, right? That's that, the coffin is the crisis card. Mice is feelings of scarcity and gnawing worries. Yeah, so you can see what's holding this whole thing up, what, what this is all based upon. All right, and um, let's see. Oh, well, we have uh, more information for the beginning of the story, this whole top corner, whereas before the beginning of the story was, was the uh, rider, but now we, we've added another cross and a book and, and the clouds. So that's really good information. So the first rider is bringing news of hardship based on new information coming in that's uh, you know things that he's about to find out that's the book or facts that were hidden that cast a dark shadow over the project right now this right hand column this is where the energy is all moving toward and i already pointed out that he's now um f facing a key right he's he's about to um find the solution so the moon is heading this and we have the fox right so we could say that He's going to go on to recognize the wrongness in his thinking as he progresses to the moon above the fox. He's, he's starting to think more creatively or cunningly to see things in a new light. That's the moon, right? Seeing things in a new light. And he's going to trust the moon shining on the fox is that he's going to trust his instincts, right? The, the fox is, is the uh, instinct card, the instinct uh, to survive, trying to survive, right? Um, 
So he's going to um, see things in a, a new light and he's going to trust his instincts that tell him not to put such a strain on his finances. Because what is this key knight to? It knights to the fish with the cross above it. And we can say that he's going to find peace because the rest of this column is the beautiful lily above the uh, ways, right? So he's going to find peace when he buries the idea of moving right now because what is the lily knight to the lily knights to the the uh moving card the stork and the coffin right yes now we can also see what's around this last card of the inner box right was the tree or is the tree okay that's the exit card but now we can see more cards around it and we could say that this tree is rooted in loss and erosion. Um, the, the man stands to lose money if he moves this year. That's what this is telling me. The, the solution is to bury, bury the idea of moving, which I just said. And, and he de definitely needs um, time and, and patience before he does move. Um, now, the lily, don't forget, is the card of temperance. And... Because it, it um, knights to the, the fish as it describes the, or, or we could say it, mir it mirrors rather, it's mirroring the fish as it's describing the tree. Um, that's definitely telling me that he needs to wait for a more balanced and peaceful time to move, right? So he's going to go another way because now we have a new exit card. That's the... Um, the ways so he's going to go in a, a new way and look for alternatives to, to moving and that that's being blessed by the lily so that's definitely the right thing to do right it's being blessed by the lily so and it, it the the ways knights to uh him and his money <laughs> so the money's going to stay with him if he chooses to go another way and be patient Woo! all right that's it Folks, for this video, I hope you found it exciting and inspiring and educational. Uh, don't forget to like and share this video as well as hitting that thanks button if you are in a position to do so. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.